Lesson 4-1, Angle Measures. When an angle is in standard position, the vertex is at the origin. The initial side is on the positive x-axis, and the terminal side is rotated counterclockwise from the initial side. Since the terminal side is just rotated around, we could rotate around and around and around. And we could get what are called coterminal angles. These are two angles with the same sides but different measures, such as in this picture, alpha and beta are different sizes, but they have the same sides of the angle. We can get these by simply going around again, or again, or going backwards all the way around. So all the way around is 360 degrees. So to find coterminal angles, just to add or subtract 360 degrees. Most common used uh, angle measurements in the world are degree measures. Zero is over here on the positive x-axis, and we go counterclockwise through the quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, four, in that order. So you have 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and then 360 is back at the beginning. The other unit for angles is radians. One radian is the angle whose radius equals the arc length. So you can see in the picture, this angle is one radian. If we were to take this arc length and straighten it out, it would be the same length as the radius. And you can see we start at zero, and then pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then two pi is back where we began. So two pi is like 360 degrees. An acute angle is an angle who's less than 90 degrees or less than pi over two radians. An obtuse angle is an angle that's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, or between pi over two and pi radians. Complementary angles are angles that, two angles that add together to make 90 degrees, or pi over two radians. And supplementary are two angles that add up to make 180 degrees, or pi radians. Notice when we're talking about degrees, we always use the degree symbol. Radians don't have a symbol. Sometimes we'll use RAD, but they don't have a symbol. Pi is not a unit of radians. Pi is simply a number, 3.14. So if you're talking about angle measures, if it has a degree symbol, it's degrees. If it does not have a degree symbol, then it is radians. And we could have just, you know, two radians. Two radians is somewhere over here. So let's try some of these. Let's find a coterminal angle for an angle that's negative pi over 8 radians, since there's no degree symbol. So to do a coterminal angle, it was adding 360 degrees. Well, we're not in degrees, we're in radians. So we're going to add 2 pi. Now we need a common denominator. So if I want it to be 8, it would be 16 pi over 8. So negative 1 pi over 8 plus 16 pi over 8 would be 15 pi over 8. Negative 1 plus 16. So that's 1. You could also subtract if you wanted to. So that would be negative pi over 8 minus 16 pi over 8, which would be negative 17 pi over 8. 
find the supplement of pi over 4. Again, this is radians. Supplement are two angles that add together to make pi radians. So if one of them is pi over 4, what's the other? Well, we would subtract. We need a common denominator. So 4 pi minus 1 pi would be 3 pi over 4. To convert between radians and degrees, use the fact that 180 degrees equals pi radians. Now just because we can convert doesn't mean we should. You, as a student, need to learn to use radians. Do not be converting all radians to degrees. You need to learn to use the radian unit. Let's convert 120 degrees to radians. So we have 120 degrees. I'm going to put the 180 degrees on the bottom so the units cancel. We have pi. Multiply across and reduce. The zeros reduce and 12 and 18 reduce by 6 to have it be 2 pi over 3. All right, some applications of angles. Well, we could do arc length, which is the length of this curve. It's labeled S in the picture. So arc length is how long is that curve in, say, feet or inches or meters or centimeters. Anyway, arc length equals the radius times the angle. But the angle has to be in radians. We can also find the area of a sector. So it's the shaded area in the picture. And it's like the area of, say, a piece of pizza. Well, the area is just a fraction of a circle times pi r squared. Because that's the area of the circle. It's how much of the circle, say, half the circle or quarter of the circle, times the area of the circle. Well, the fraction of the circle would be our angle over 2 pi, because 2 pi is all the way around. Well, the pi's would cancel out, so it's just 1 half the angle times the radius squared. But your angle has to be in radians. More application speeds. Angular speed is how fast something is spinning around. And it's the angle divided by time. By the way, this is an omega. It's not a w. Linear speed or tangential speed is how fast it's going in a straight line in any given second. So if we're going in a circle, linear speed is how fast that particle is going. And it's distance over time. So s is distance. This is your angle over time. Linear speed is your distance over time. Well, distance was arc length for going in a circle. So arc length was the angle times the radius. Oh, but look, angle divided by time is angular speed. So to relate the two speeds, linear speed equals the radius times the angular speed. So let's say a 6 inch diameter gear makes 2.5 revolutions per second. A revolution is all the way around. Find the angular speed in radians per second. Well we actually have an angular speed here. It's 2.5 revolutions per second. And so that is an angular speed because revolutions is a way to measure the angles. It's two and a half complete times around. So really, all I have to do is convert this to radians. One revolution is two pi radians. Put the revolution on the bottom so it cancels. So that gives five pi radians per second.
Well, how fast is the tooth at the edge of the gear moving in inches per second? Well, inches per second is linear speed. So if we have our angular speed, V equals R omega. Well, our diameter is six inches, therefore our radius must be three inches. And our angular speed is five pi radians per second, which gives us 15 pi inches per second. And you say, what happened to the radians? That's why we usually don't write radians is because they technically don't have any algebraic unit. And we use radians as a placeholder if we need it to describe it, but it's a different type of unit. And radians isn't a unit because radians is when the arc length equals the radius. It's the angle when your arc length equals your radius. So that's, say, meters over meters. The units cancel out. So there isn't any actual unit for radians.